What's going on guys, it's Greg Mikos Dyes and welcome to another weekly update where I'm going to bring you guys all the lacrosse news from the previous week that you need to know as well as what's going on and what's coming up this week. So I didn't really plan on running this show for this long, I just thought it would be a cool way of updating you guys. So let me know if it needs a better title or a better format, if you guys are happy with just standing informed with what's going on in the lacrosse community. So before we get into the big news, let's go through a couple tidbits. Number one, ECD Apparel launched last week, check it out at ecdlax.com. Number two, Lacrosse Unlimited is hosting their annual brand competition. I'll put the link down in the description to go vote. They take votes for stuff like best brand, best head, best handle. I don't want to brag, but we have brought home a decent amount of hardware in the past, and that's mostly due to your guys' support. So go down, link in bio, or check out their Instagram for more links on how you can vote. Uh, vote for ECD for favorite brand, and I would really appreciate it. Also, as you know, we've been assembling medical face shields. Here's an example one. Uh, we got a little sticker. These are in real dire need in the medical community for everything from uh, frontline medical workers uh, to small groups. And it seems like a lot of the companies that are distributing them right now are taking uh, only orders with really high minimum order quantities. So soon we're going to be getting some more of these in and listing them on our site so you guys can get them for uh, you know smaller quantity purposes, donate them to hospitals, whatever you need to do. Uh, so we'll keep assembling these and hopefully keep you guys updated on when they can go up on our site for purchase. We've also got uh, the PLL with initiative with uh, Jerry Ragnese and Pro Athletics to make the, uh, the masks that you guys should be wearing every day. And String King is also making those. So if you guys need those, a lot of great lacrosse companies are getting in the mix. And then we've got the giveaway from last week, the never produced uh, reverse Storm Striker Hero 3. We're going to do a Q&A at the end of this segment and we will announce who won the mesh. We're also hosting a giveaway on our Instagram. Brian, our creative director, created a coloring book for you guys at home, and we're gonna have a giveaway. All you have to do is go to our site, I'll put the link in the description, download the coloring book, pick your favorite page, uh, do a little illustration, you can even do it digitally if you want, post a photo to Instagram, and we're gonna be giving away ECD gift cards. So hit the link in our bio, it's a lot of fun, give you guys something to do at home, stay involved, uh, and you can also win a little bit of ECD gift card with it. So into the big lacrosse news from the week. Obviously the biggest news was Dave Petramala is out from Hopkins as head coach. It does seem like it was an amicable decision and he seemed pretty excited about the opportunity. Personally, I think he's been there for a long time. He achieved what he wanted to achieve, won two national championships. He's also the only person to have ever won a national championship as a player uh, and been national player of the year and also won a national championship as a coach and been national coach of the year. His resume speaks for himself. Uh, the last couple years at Hopkins have been a little rocky, but I think it's really cool to see him looking for a new opportunity. I think whatever school gets him is going to be uh, is going to have a fantastic coach on their hands and a great recruiter. And you saw all the players uh, who have played for him just sing his praises. So. Big news, I don't think it's necessarily bad or good news, just a big shakeup. You know, uh, Hopkins and Dave Petromala have been an institution of lacrosse ever since I've been alive. So that's a really big shakeup in the industry. And the biggest news out of college lacrosse is that TD Erlin will not return to Yale. It seems as though he'll declare for the PLL draft. He put out a statement that said he had already transferred once from Albany to Yale. Uh, he played in the national championship for Yale, he played in the final four for Albany. And I think he feels like he doesn't want to go to a third school, which is totally understandable. Uh, so he is going to be a top dra draft prospect, if not the number one draft prospect, depending on how the Archers want to go with their draft pick. They do have the number one pick, and it's hard to say if they need more offensive power or if a faceoff guy would work really well for them. So TD, not going to go back to Yale. He's going to come post-collegiate and hopefully go into the PLL and be a top draft pick. And in some bad news, the WPLL unfortunately has canceled their 2020 season. That is the Women's Pro League that did a little bit of touring with the PLL. I actually got a chance to film their championship game last year, and I was blown away how fun it was to watch, how aggressive and how fast-paced it was. It is truly the best version of the women's game and I think had a lot of potential. Um, you know, it's just a new league and so it's tough to operate under these conditions. So they're going to cancel the 2020 season and hopefully pick up in 2021 stronger than ever. I know I'll be excited to watch. So let's get into the Q&A. The winner of our mesh is going to be Eli Hernandez. We'll send you a message. Thanks a lot for leaving your comment. And that comment was, what is a lacrosse mesh or head that was one of your favorites growing up? Uh, so the only mesh I had when I was very, very young was uh, just the hard mesh that came with SDX and Warrior kits or whatever came in the head. 
And then as I got older into high school and college, I found out about Gimelax and was a Gimelax diehard, always used uh, their semi-hard mesh and all their spools, strung all the guys on my college team with it. As far as heads, I used a ton of different heads throughout my playing career. I still remember buying the OG Blade when it came out the first time, um, but I think the one I was most excited to get was the original Evolution way back in the day. Laxballer30 asks, what's my favorite college lax moment ever? I would have to say when Sergio Perkovic, Notre Dame in the Final Four, went off for four goals to put his team back in contention in a span of just a couple minutes. He took over the game, showed his speed, strength, and power. It was one of the most impressive performances I've ever seen. Close second, Dylan Malloy playing on a broken foot in the playoffs. That was a lot of fun to watch and pretty impressive by him. Sawyer Lennon wants to know my thoughts on the Sowers-O'Keefe combo. I said in the last episode that I would love to see Sowers go to Penn State. I think those two are a perfect fit with Amant leaving. I think Penn State is a great contender for the national championship this year. That is a combination I would pay to see in 2021. Cody Parker, similar question to the first one. What were our favorite, my favorite lax brands and players growing up? First off with the players, always was a huge Kyle Harrison fan. Um, and obviously Mikey Powell, they were really the two big ones of my era growing up. I also had a Mark Millen poster on my wall through high school and college, and he was one of the guys I must have watched uh, the Offensive Wizardry, Wizardry, his DVD back then. That's how we learned we bought DVDs a million times. As far as my favorite brands, I think I started out as an STX guy because my dad always had an STX high wall, and then I moved into Warrior around the Evolution area, and then in high school and college, I went back to STX. It was always pretty brand loyal, but kind of went back and forth between those ones. And back then, there were so many fewer brands. It was really just choosing between Brine, Warrior, or STX. It was, there weren't many other choices, so it didn't matter. Scott wants to know, Q&A, are you guys going to the Ocean City Tournament this year? We just posted a little highlight on our Instagram that has feeling a little nostalgic um, that our buddy Tristan who films for us, he put it together. And I'm really hoping we go. That is all the way in August. So hopefully everything will be buttoned up by then and we'll be able to play. If not, maybe we'll try and find some fall tournaments to play in and do some film for that. If I could play on an attack line with two players from any era, who would they be? So I know number one would be Connor Fields. Number one, I really love him as a player. I love his attitude, but just to watch him create on the field that close would be a lot of fun. Number two, Marcus Holman. He was an ECD pro for a while, and I just love the energy that he brings to the field. His celebrations are always some of my favorite, and I think that he would just be a ton of fun to play with. So make sure to leave your questions for next week down in the comments. I'll make sure to get to as many as humanly possible. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next Monday.